Inventions have revolutionized the world. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the inventors that moved American society forward in the 1800s. As you watch this video, take notes, but also draw pictures and sketches to show me that you are listening to the video in addition to just copying down the words on the slides. The guiding question is, how did the inventions and entrepreneurs affect the lives of America? First, let's define the difference between an inventor and an entrepreneur. An inventor is a person who is the first to think of or make something. Inventors think about the world around them. They observe things that are working well for society and are curious about how things are made. Inventors consider what life would be like in the future and how the development of technology and new strategies as well as new thinking and ideas can lead to a better world. Inventors aren't satisfied with the way things are. They are always thinking about what they could do and change and improve to create. Inventors are creatives. They have to muster up courage and persistence. Inventing is a process. There is a lot of trial and error. These type folks are resilient. That means that when they fail, they don't get upset. Instead, they view their failure as an opportunity to learn what did not work and what they could do to get closer to the solution. I can definitely see some of you becoming inventors one day, and you can start now with how much you think and read and learn and wonder. Entrepreneurs are those who organize resources to bring a new or better product or service to market in the hopes of earning a profit. So what does that mean? Well, they are the ones who turn the invention or the idea into a business to make money. Sometimes inventors are also the entrepreneurs themselves who take their newly invented product or idea and sell it for money. Or sometimes they work with a team of inventors on the same project to make money. Obviously, there is a process involved to get their invention approved by the government so that they get the credit for it and a process for selling the product, and it all takes time, often a long time. It takes a lot of grit to be an entrepreneur. Not only do you have to work hard and be okay with failure, but often you have to take a lot of risk. You may have heard of their businesses being called startups because they are just starting up a new business. Entrepreneurs have to be okay with losing money if their idea for a business does not work out at first or is slow in making a steady amount of money. Entrepreneurs have to persevere and be positive that they will make their business plan a success and be willing to make changes based on what the needs of customers and the market dictate. Some of you may become entrepreneurs in the future. Working hard now and thinking of how you can turn ideas into action plans, even if it is just putting on your own play or creating your own website or YouTube channel or having a lemonade stand can get you on the right track to practicing the skills of becoming a successful entrepreneur. So let's get started learning about inventors and entrepreneurs from the 1800s that brought about radical change and improvements to the expansion of the the cotton gin was invented by Eli Whitney in 1794. The cotton gin was a machine that combed the seeds out of cotton plants so that the cotton plants could be turned into cotton fabric. Before the cotton gin was invented, slavery was actually on the decline. Harvesting cotton was very labor intensive and required many people to pick out the prickly, thorny seeds by hand. It took one slave to clean one pound of cotton per day. But after the cotton gin became available, the cotton gin could clean up to 50 pounds of cotton per day. This allowed cotton to become a cash crop. A plantation owner could plant hundreds of acres of cotton and easily clean it using the cotton gin. So he needed more and more slaves to cultivate more and more cotton and make more and more money. The cotton gin was a great invention, but it increased slavery big time in the United States. The mechanical reaper was another game changer for farmers. This invention could be hooked onto a horse or oxen and it would cut and gather crops like wheat and corn when they were ready to harvest. Instead of having to use a sickle by hand, now farmers could use the reaper to cut, harvest more of their crops with less work and time. The Mechanical Reaper was invented by Cyrus McCormick and his family slave, Joe Anderson. According to some accounts, Anderson and McCormick were more like brothers than slave and master. Together they worked to perfect the Reaper to make farming more efficient. 
Cyrus McCormick was the entrepreneur who brought the invention to market so that they could sell the invention and make money. The mechanical reaper increased the productivity of the American farmer because now he could grow more crops and harvest them much more quickly and easily than he had before. Robert Fulton is the engineer, inventor, and artist who brought the steamboat from the experimental stage to the commercial success. Fulton had the idea to build a boat that was powered by a steam engine. He partnered with New York businessman Robert Livingston, who agreed to fund the project. Robert's first steamboat quickly broke apart and sunk. He could have easily gotten discouraged, however, he did not give up. He learned from his mistakes and a year later successfully tested out his first steamboat in England. Talk about grit! Robert had built his first steamboat in England, but now wanted to build a steamboat in the United States. But England would not legally let him take the steam engine out of the country. They were trying to keep the technology of the steam power for themselves. Again, he could have let this stop him, but he had a vision and kept persevering to make it a reality. After almost two years of working, he was finally permitted to bring a single steam engine to the United States. The steamboat provided faster river transportation for Americans. It connected southern plantations and farms to northern in industries and western territories. This was a big deal because now crops like tobacco and cotton that were grown in the South could be sent on steamboats up to the rivers or the steamboats up the rivers to factories to turn the natural resources into products that people would buy. The steam locomotive was another invention that revolutionized America in the 1800s. Trains began with the idea of the horse car, which ran smoothly on rails that had been laid in the road, and the railroad was born. Rails reduced the bumpiness of regular wagons on gravel roads and increased efficiency, meaning ease and quickness. The first railroad was of this kind in America was built in Boston in 1807. The idea caught on in other cities and towns and long lines of railroads of this kind were soon built to carry both passengers and produce. As we know, the steamboat had just been invented and an, an inventor named George Stevenson thought that he could use steam to haul the wagons and carriages over a railroad. Slowly but surely, more and more railroads were built between cities and towns and the steam locomotive became more popular. Between 1849 and 1858, 21,000 miles of railroad were built in the United States of America. Just two years later, in 1860, there were more than 30,000 miles of railroad in actual operation, and one continuous line of rails ran from New York City to the Mississippi River. This was amazing for the country because the train provided faster transportation across land, connecting the United States together. Think about it. Now people and products could be sent to faraway places much more quickly, promoting travel and business all at the same time. The telegraph revolutionized long-distance communication. It worked by transmitting electrical signals over a wire laid between stations. Samuel Morris is credited as the American inventor of the telegraph. He was the first person to make a telegraph with only one wire and also helped to come up with the idea of Morse code. Since the 1700s, there were different types of telegraphs being made, but they were hard to use because they had several wires. Morris and his assistants and his assistant made a code with dots and dashes, which were two different types of clicks on the telegraph. Morse's invention made it possible to quickly communicate with people far away, and many telegraph lines were built. A telegra telegraph line using his invention was built between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore in 1844. By the 1860s, there were telegraph lines all around North America, and in 1866, a telegraph line was built across the Atlantic Ocean.